Hello everyone, back to you in today's video. We're going to have a look at the next three months for the Japanese model today. It's not JMA Friday, it's JMA Tuesday. Uh, we're going to go through March, April and May uh, with the Japanese model. This will make up the uh, spring forecast, or part of the spring forecast I do on Sunday. You'll be able to see the actual spring forecast on Sunday. But uh, be because there's so much information that you can get from the uh, Japanese model, a uh, huge amount of information, uh, I haven't got time when I do the spring uh, forecast to uh, show Show you everything that you can get with this model because we've got about uh, six, seven uh, other models to look at uh, during those actual uh, seasonal uh, forecasts. So I thought I'd show you all of the information today as a bit of a sneak peek of what's ahead on Sunday. Hope you uh, enjoy the video. I say this takes us right way through uh, to May. Um, now, very good. I've had to say about the ads. There's links to articles on most of the pages. That goes over. Let's go have a browse through the widgets. And if there's any articles that you're interested in, please click through. You've had to go off and read those articles. And because you click from Gas of it's to go off and read those articles, we get a revenue fee on what you're doing. Thanks so much for doing that. It's helping to pay the website, really, uh, allow me to see and talk to you via uh, the website. So thanks so much for getting involved. Thanks for doing that. And just say there's going to be another live broadcast with myself and Quantum on Saturday evening at 7 o'clock. Uh, the last one went down. Uh, hugely successful. Um, everybody seemed to enjoy it. So we managed to get our schedules together uh, and do another one this Saturday. So come back for that if you're interested uh, in what we're discussing. I think we're discussing the models, how the winter has panned out, that kind of thing. So uh, come back for that on Saturday evening. Right, let's get on with uh, JMA Tuesday. Then I say we're looking at the uh, next three months from the Japanese model. Uh, we're starting off here with May, uh, with March, sorry, <laughs> with the 500 bit of our height anomalies. Uh, for March. This is the Northern Hemisphere view, first of all. I've flipped these around so that you can uh, see the British Isles uh, from our side of the uh, Northern Hemisphere. As you know, we have 500 mm height, so yellow is extrapolating to high pressure, blue is extrapolating to low pressure. So uh, for the coming month, for March, we've got a ridge of high pressure there uh, around Iceland, or above average heights anyway, with a mean trough of low pressure sitting through the central part of the Atlantic. The uh, flow uh, with this is going something like that, as it's quite cold in the east of the United States, again, the trough being signaled there. Um, and then the flow goes something like that. So actually, we're on the cold side of a jet stream uh, there with hints of blocking around ice. So that's not very strong blocking. So it wouldn't be a continuously cold month with that. But I think overall that is a pretty uh, pretty chilly sort of month going on there and quite unsettled as well with a bit of a southerly uh, tracking jet stream. So there will certainly be a risk of uh, quite a lot of frost coming through uh, with that one. Unsettled conditions at times as well. And certainly there is the potential, I would suggest, uh, for some wintry uh, conditions, maybe some sleet or stow at time but it's not an extreme block pattern I have to emphasize that so we're probably not talking about the sort of cold that we had in march 2013 but a cold and average month probably uh, <coughs> excuse me likely on that sort of scenario now, as we move through into April, we find that the uh, high pressure in Burma more or less comes down over the top of the country. So it's sitting there, particularly centred to the north and the northeast, but it's ridging into most parts of the British Isles. But trough of low pressure is pinged out into the central part of uh, the Atlantic. Um, that's quite an unusual one, but I think overall it's mainly dry uh, conditions with that. Most of them settle down in the southwest where this low pressure is trying to bring uh, some rain in at times. But this area above average heights is largely dominating things. It does extend fair way north, so I think we're probably putting in quite cool air actually with that from uh, the north east. So it won't be a particularly warm month, a lot of dry weather, but also perhaps a lot of uh, late season frost going on there um, and most unsettled down uh, in the south. And then finally we go through into uh, May, and this one's a little bit odd. We've got a bit area of above average heights sitting to the south of the country so that's reasonably good uh, for warm weather. Um, trough of low pressure in the central part of the Atlantic and also over Scandinavia as well. That's quite a, a difficult one to make out, but I think overall the flow is going something uh, like that around those troughs and ridges. So we may be bringing the jet stream through the country. So although we've got an area of above average height sitting just to the south, and you will think that's probably quite a nice, uh, quite a nice anomaly. Um, high pressure close. 
side. We may be running with Jetstream more on race three, the country. So actually, it could be a little bit more unsettled than it looks. But uh, I think overall, that's probably the best of the three in terms of temperature because the, the main flow with that should be coming off the Atlantic and from the southwest. So it should be a reasonably mild month. I'm not sure uh, that it would be all that settled. But overall, from these... Uh, Three anomalies for March, April and May. There's not a great deal of evidence that we're going to have a, a lot of warm weather through the course of the spring. And at times it does look quite mixed, although April perhaps uh, holds the best prospect for some uh, drier conditions. But there it's a, a little, probably a little bit on the uh, chilly side. Uh, we're having a cooler year this year compared to last year, most definitely. Uh, January, uh, this year is cooler to January last year. February is going to be significantly cooler this year compared to last year. It looks like that trend is going to continue into the spring. And whilst there's no real evidence of anything very cold coming up uh, for the spring, I certainly think 2015 is going to prove to be uh, a cooler year, uh, certainly first half of the year anyway, compared to 2014. Now we have a look at the mid-latitude view to see how all this works out. So we'll start off with the 500 billabar height anomalies uh, for March from the mid-latitude view. So the British Isles is just over here in the very far top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. And for March, as we know, we've got the high pressure. Uh, you can't see it on this chart, but the high pressure is sitting to the north around Iceland with low pressure uh, tracking to the south. So uh, the jet stream is going to the south of the country like that. So it's an unsettled uh, sort of signal for uh, March, but also quite cool as well. It could be cold, in fact, at times with frost and sun. Uh, wintry potential. So the temperature anomaly uh, for March does back that up. Uh, it's coming out colder or cooler uh, than average uh, within those blue colours. In terms of the precipitation uh, anomaly, um, as you'd expect with a southerly tracking jet stream, it's looking wetter in the south and drier in the north. So the north is close to the high pressure up here and the uh, south is wetter with the low pressure down here and I said there is some wintry potential uh, on that sort of setup so you would expect some uh, early uh, spring sleet and snow perhaps at times. I have to emphasise it, it isn't the sort of locked in severe car pack that we had in March 2013 so I wouldn't be expected to repeat of that but overall a relatively cool and settled month uh, coming up. Not sure if you can make out the wind arrows but the mean wind flow here uh, here is generally easterly or northeasterly. Uh, not sure you can quite make that out of those black arrows, but that is the uh, mean wind flow from the east or the northeast. So that's the reason the temperatures have pegged right back. As we move through into April, as we saw on the Northern Hemisphere view, the uh, area of above average heights is coming in right over the top of the country. So uh, uh, we're building the heights down over the shards from a cool direction from the north. So it's not uh, it's not particularly warm with that setup, but it is turning drier with the uh, below average heights pinged out into the central part of the Atlantic. So uh, precipitation anomaly shows that we're going a bit drier uh, into uh, April, turning a little bit drier than the average although still a suggestion of some precipitation particularly out in the west across Ireland but it is a drier month I think in April compared to March and uh, the temperature uh, anomaly for April well because the high pressure is coming down from the north and the flow is still generally from the north northeast direction temperatures are still disappointing so coming out on the cooler side uh, of the average not as cold uh, an anomaly as we have in March, but nevertheless still a cooler than average month. The mean uh, wind flow uh, direction is still generally coming in. Uh, not sure if you make it out, but the arrows are still generally coming in uh, from an easterly type uh, direction in April. And then going through into May, then we set up the high pressure uh, to the south of the country, area above our heights uh, to the south. The low pressure is out in the Atlantic. If you remember, there's another one up to the northeast of the country over Scandinavia. You can see a little bit better uh, just there. Um, so the temperature anomaly for uh, for May gets a little bit better. It goes a little bit above average uh, in uh, it goes a little bit above average in May. Not a desperately warm month again, but uh, certainly that's the best uh, of 
the three in terms of the uh, temperatures. The precipitation anomaly is near normal to a little bit wetter than average in the north. That's because we're just running the jet stream through. Although it looked like quite a good pattern with the high pressure to the south, we're just running the jet stream in. Uh, so uh, it's a little bit wetter than average actually in May, uh, especially up in the north. But I think it's the best of the three, uh, really. Um, and the main wind flow uh, arrows are showing that the uh, wind direction is generally coming more from a southwesterly uh, or even southerly type direction. So uh, it could even be a little bit warmer uh, on that uh, with that sort of mean wind flow than the model is suggesting. There is the potential for some pretty good warmth there in May. I think out of the three, May is the best one in terms of uh, spring weather, uh, although it's not totally settled. We are running the jet stream through at times. So that's how the JMA is looking for the spring. A pretty mixed bag and not the greatest spring uh, in the world by any means. Just have a look at the CFS uh, for the next couple of months. We can't go to May with this, but we, have, we can have a look at March and April. This is the latest update uh, from the CFS V2 from the website webweb.net. You can find a link to our web on my links page. This is the 500 rid of our height anomaly for uh, March, and we see that we've got an area of above average heights there over Scandinavia, top of low pressure in the Atlantic, the flow going uh, something like that. We're bringing in uh, relatively cool air from the east, or uh, maybe even uh, the northeast on that one. Go through into April, and this isn't very good for April. Look at this, we've got a area of above average heights into the north. This is very similar to what the JMA is showing for March, but the CFS has it a month later in April, an area of above average heights around Greenland and Iceland, a trough of low pressure, more or less over the top of Brichard, and uh, the flow is very northerly and northeasterly with that. So that would be a pretty uh, nasty April, actually. You would expect a lot of uh, sort of rain uh, with that, also some sleet or snow. At times you can still get sleet or snow in April and uh, quite a lot of frost uh, as well. So uh, it looks like a bit of a mixed bag, actually, in terms of uh, the spring, certainly from the JMA and the CFS. They're not indicating the greatest spring that we've ever had. Uh, but it's, we'll have a look at all the other models uh, on Sunday. This isn't the uh, spring forecast. I'll be doing that on Sunday when we get around six or seven of these longer range models to go and have a quick look through all of them to see what they're showing. But uh, certainly from the JMA and the CFS B2, it looks a bit of a mixed bag. Um, and it doesn't look like we're going to revert back to that very uh, mild, very warm pattern that we had uh, last year, as I explained. Uh, generally, we are having a, a cooler year this year compared to last year, although it hasn't been uh, particularly cold. We are much closer to average compared to where it was in 2014. And if these models are anything to go by, it looks as though that's how we're going off into the spring as well. Much closer to average. Some wintry potential uh, at times, whether it's March or April, uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to uh, wait and see on that one. But some wintry potential coming through. And uh, yeah, a bit of a mixed bag. May could be the best of it. That's it for now. And thanks for watching.